Hello, Mr. Hello? Suleiman. Hello? Hello, Mr. Suleiman. How are you tonight? This is Joe Hadid from Rubber Dope Radio. Very good. Nice talking to you. My pleasure. Oh, thank you. Um, myself and Chris Carlson are on the line. We're going to ask you a few questions. I'm going to go ahead and start it off. Sure. Very good. My pleasure. Okay. After Derek Chisero's actions this past weekend, with not only the slapping incident, but him spitting water in Vladimir's face, and also the altercation at the post-fight press conference, is the WBC going to take further action against him and possibly suspend him from taking part in future WBC-sanctioned events? Well, uh, the WBC cannot uh, contemplate and excuse the behavior of boxers to discredit the sport of boxing and the WBC. Uh, what uh, he did is really unexplainable. He didn't do one thing, and that's all, as usually happens. You know, he slapped the face the following day. He spit on the face of the brother, and then at the dressing room, he had a fight and took off the the uh, tape. And uh, then after the conference, and that's really very, very difficult to understand. Mm. Under those circumstances, the WBC is going to participate in a hearing. Okay. And in this hearing, the WBC is probably going to impose a $50,000 fine to be given to a benevolent fund. And also, we are going to recommend and require that... Uh, he goes into a uh, anger management medical treatment. And uh, with that, it will be a suspension, indefinite suspension, until the time that the medical advice let us know that he's mentally in his proper mind. That's what OBC is considering, and we are waiting for the hearing to take place in London. After what happened this past weekend in the scoring of the Clau Campillo fight, as well as other recent incidents of questionable scoring of fights lately, do you think that the commissions need to do a better job at picking judges for the big fights and make sure that they have the proper experience? Are you talking about the fight in Germany? No, I'm talking about the, the Tavoris Clau Campillo fight that took place on Saturday. I'm a, I don't know if you're familiar with that. The no, idea. I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry. I am not. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. But just in general, if you remember Paul Williams um, versus yes. uh, Lara and other incidences like that, my question yes. is, yes. Do, you, do you think that these commissions need to do a better job at scouting these judges and making sure that they're experienced enough to do these big fights? You know, the WBC has a policy of always appointing neutral officials. And by neutral, we mean not of the same state of the boxers or not of the same nation. But in the United States, the WBC cannot do that because the boxing commissions, which are somehow independent and autonomous, they decide to appoint their own judges, their own referee. Uh, there are a few very nice boxing commissions with us with whom we agree that we appoint two neutral officials and they appoint two of their own. So in the United States, it's very difficult for WBC to consider many, many actions of uh, trying to be very, very sure about who we appoint. But in the rest of the world, we always appoint all four neutral officials. I believe that... Uh, the uh, neutrality is very, very important because you are not living in the this, in this city where the fight takes place, and if the people doesn't like what you do, you will be receiving every day of life, you know, criticism and opposition, and, and that's why we are very concerned about the ring officials not only being neutral, but also being... Uh, uh, trained during the whole year, which the WBC does. After every fight, 
we receive the tapes and we review the tapes and make uh, make uh, notes to the referees and the judges that work. And with that, we review what was wrong, what was right. And that's the way that we work. But we we'll know what other people do. Okay. In regards to the drug testing issue in Texas a couple of weeks ago, moving forward, what can the WBC do in the future to make sure something like this doesn't happen again? Well, you know, we never had a situation like this before. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I've been the president for 37 years, and I'm talking about more than 1,000 world title fights, and I don't remember ever having something like this. It, we were surprised because we informed the commission that we wanted the anti doping test. They agreed. And uh, we also put it in writing. And the Texas Boxing Commission is one of the best that we have worked with always. Mm -hmm. They are very positive, very hardworking. But, you know, then something like this happens, and I just cannot explain it. We, we were very sorry, but at the same time, none of the six title fights, of the three, I'm sorry, of the three title fights had any examinations. We were very sorry, and so was the commission, but they just, I don't know what happened. Now, in Floyd be, be, uh, I'm sorry? No, you didn't finish. I apologize. No, well, I don't know what, what to tell you, but uh, I am sure that the Boxing Commission is quite uh, apologetic and, and sorry that whatever happened, I don't know why, but that happened. And, and you know, we understand. Now, can WBC just check ahead of time and, and just... Uh, kind of confer with the commission to make sure that the proper people are in place to make sure that the testing does get done after the fight? Is that something that could be done by the WBC? And, and probably we did it. Okay. We, when we sent the letter of the, of the fight, we, we sent all the, the recommendations because we cannot demand anything from foreign boxing commissions, but we stated everything that we needed and work in cooperation with them. When we arrived there at the rules meeting, which is hours before the fight, one day before the fight, we again publicly stated that we were expecting the anti to to be held. So we never, never, even after the fight, we had no idea that this had happened. So it was only, it's only when many of the people had left that one of the commissioners came uh, to talk about the, the weight that Chavez had reduced and all those things. But that, that they never told us even at any time that this was happening. Okay. So basically, once that paperwork is sent to the commission, it, it's, it's on them. They're supposed to take care of it. Am I correct? Well, the, yes, it is the same all over the world. Because we know what authority, what legal authority or, or freedom the WBC has to go to another country and work officially in something. We cannot do that. We, we have to respect the law, the law of the country. So we definitely leave it in the hands of the Basin Commission, with which we work very well, you know. But a mistake can happen any time. That's life. And, and as we very seldom, in Texas, we never had this before. We've, we've had many, many boxing titles in the state, and it all has been taking care of everything that we have agreed. So the time is, is I, I don't know just what to explain. Yeah, I, am, I understand. Yes. Uh, in Floyd Mayweather's case, because his crime was a misdemeanor and not a felony, was that the reason why he was allowed to keep his title? Well, uh, the WBC states, the rules state that only when a, when a boxer is in jail for a uh, major crime, 
Okay. And it's not uh, to, to come out, then we can strip him of the title. But in this case, he was, uh, how do you say that, uh, sanctioned for 90 days in jail and, and all that. And we did not consider that such a great fighter, such a loyal WBC fighter, five titles of five divisions of the WBC, and knowing that he was repented, we just didn't take the title away from him. Understood. And that, that is something that, that uh, is discussed by the 36 board governors that live all over the world. We always say, send the voting, casting voting, mm-hmm. and they answer, and then we follow the rules. And in the, in the Floyd Mayweather case, it was a unanimous uh, position of all the members of the board to support and help the fighter. In your opinion, are Saul Alvarez and Julio Cesar Chavez the best fighters in their division? Yes. They are, to me, the best fighters in their division. I believe so. They are the champions. And there is a big a quarrel today in public when Martinez is accusing Chavez of being a coward and uh, Bob Arum not helping by saying that he would not allow Chavez to fight Martinez, and he's picking some of the challengers. But the WBC's position is, at the WBC World uh, Convention, we said we will allow the parts to reach an agreement for the pending fight that they have on February the 4th and March the 17th. But the winner of February 4th must meet Martinez if Martinez wins on the 17th. So if the champion does not comply with that or Martinez doesn't, you know, we have to follow the rules and do whatever the rules say. And that is, if you don't defend the title mandatorily as the ruling of the WBC, you have to lose the title. I hope that it does, does not happen that Julio, who has been a, a boy that has been coming up with the WBC, will not disrespect your organization and will accept to fight Martinez and they can erase all doubts that might be in the world today. So if the unfortunate incident does happen and the title does become vacant, would the number one and two contender have to fight? Or would Martinez... Yes, the, the two highest available challengers is what the WBC rules must fight for the vacant titles. So then Martinez would have to fight the winner of the number one and two contender. Is that how we would No, no, <coughs> no. We would order Martinez to fight the highest available challenger. Also, oh, okay. He because, would be yeah, to... because Martinez is the diamond champion and he's not rated because he's the diamond champion. Okay. Otherwise, he would be number one but he is above the world champion because there are only three diamond champions in the world in all the history of WBC. One is Manny Pacquiao, the other one is Bernard Hawkins, and the third one is Matiris. And that's why he is not rated number one or two or three. But if he wins and Chavez does not fight him, then he will fight the highest available challenger of the middleweight division. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Yes. Now, many people have suggested in the past that there should be only one governing body in boxing, similar to the IOC and the Olympics, so there could be more consistency in the rules. What are your thoughts on that, and do you think it could ever be possible? I would present my resignation as president tomorrow (laughs) if all the organizations do the same and we cast the voting in every country of the world and let the world decide who they want to be the president. Okay. So you think they And I on. vow on that. Okay. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> that was my last... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Very good. You know, I hope that someday there will be some uniformity and mutual respect 
because today boxing is going dramatically down. The freedom of some promoters to disregard authority, respect to the rules, and respect to the competitors is taking boxing down. In Argentina, a whole arena throwing bottles and this and that. In Germany, a boxer behaving in such a way that nobody can understand. And the promoter saying, I will not respect the organization. I will have my father fight with someone else. And all the promoters coming with the same thing. If we do not do something about it, boxing will die as a sport and will normally become a spectacle for, the, for television. That's my concern, and that's what I'm committed for. Okay, excellent. That was my last question. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pass you over to my co-host, Chris. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. Thank Great. you. All. My pleasure. Go ahead, Chris. And we're on live yeah. with the WBC President Jose Suleiman. Thanks for joining us and, and taking time out of your busy schedule. Really appreciate that. It's my pleasure. Um, just talking about the rankings, you know, no matter what um, association or council or federation it is, a lot of fans get really uptight about, uh, and for good reason, uh, the ranking systems, right? What is the, what is your yes. formula when coming down to getting the rankings in the top ten? How do you get in the top ten, and how do you go down and up off wins and losses. What What is the formula at the WBC for rankings? Because a lot of fans yeah, well, kind of scratch their head at thank, thank you for the question. It's, it is very important. We have one member of the Redis Committee from every each one of the ten boxing confederations affiliated to the WBC. The ten confederations represent the countries in each area like the EBU, the European Boxing Union, represents the countries of Europe, and so forth. So they check all the fights that are held in the world. They send to a central office all those fights that have been made at the bottom. Every month, the one, uh, one member per federation sends the recommendations to the head office. The head office puts everything together and sends to, to the chairman, the vice chairman, all the recommendations that have been received from all over the world. So they, uh, how to say that, they review and make the appointment that they believe that they are uh, right and send a final ratings for the bumps that is distributed all over the world. Every six months, we have a Redis Committee meeting. One at the convention. In the convention, all the people from each federation plus the Redis Committee have a special meeting to review all the records, all the, the way that the Redis in every division is, in uh, monitors, big monitors, and then it is open to all the General Assembly for their recommendations. And that takes a long time, one full day, to review all the recommendations, uh, comment about them, vote for them, yes and no, and at the end of the convention, the ratings of the WBC are exactly what the world of boxing wanted. That's our system. And anybody during the year can send an appeal. And we have an appeals committee to review the appeals that we receive and send their uh, recommendation or the thoughts to the readiness committee for any change that, that must be done. That's how we work. All right. Uh, thanks for that uh, definitely uh, in-depth answer. We appreciate that. As far as something that you fought for and, and, and definitely had a lot to do with passing the, the 24-hour weigh-in, um, instead of weighing in before the fight, uh, a couple hours before the fight, risking the health of the fighter, now we have the 24 hours at least before um, each bout. 
What are your thoughts, though, now? Obviously, there's a lot of positives, and I think it's something that had to change. But now the fact yes. that it seems like there is a little negative in it as far as how much weight is put on for the next day. And yes. some guys are getting outweighed by 10, 15, 20 pounds. What are your thoughts on maybe switching that back around or, or putting a weight limit on the next day? What are your thoughts yes. on that? Because it seems like it, more and more. It, it is. That. It is a very interesting and very good question. Many years ago, about 20, I think, the WBC decided to change from the six hours or so uh, way in before the fight because the boxer used to go into the ring totally dehydrated. And uh, we put it into the hands of the WBC medical board. And it took around five years for a final decision in a world medical meeting to recommend to have the way in of the bite of the fighters at least 24 hours so they could sleep, so they could drink water, rehydrate, and go to the ring with somehow good physical conditioning because the doctors thought that for a total rehydration, they needed 72 hours, not 24. But because of the impossibility that a professional boxing that could be done, we just went to the 24 hours before. But there were accidents. I remember a poor boxer from Colombia who died after the fight, and we found out that he had lost about 20 pounds in in three weeks. So the WBC also, after recommendation of our doctors, we have one doctor representing every one of the 10 confederations. They decided to recommend the WBC to have a pre-weigh-in 30 days before the fight with a 10% allowance of overweight. And then one other seven days before the fight with 5% allowance. Final, the official wait, 24 hours before the fight. One or two hours less or more, according to the promoters. Okay. In the last convention of the WBC in Las Vegas, it was an amendment to the WBC regulations which have not been yet taken into effect because we have not projected the new rule into the whole world. And the new rule is we will have one other way in at 9.30 in the morning before the fight takes place. And uh, we expect that 5% overweight to be natural. If it's 10%, the fight can take place for the title. If it's over 10%, then we will not recommend the fight to be taking place for a world championship. Also, there's going to be a fine to the fighter that considerably is waiting much more than the percentages that the doctors have recommended the WBC to respect. If there's a fine, that fine will, bo- will go totally to the boxer that weighed in and the following weighed in did it right. We expect that on July the 1st, this new rule will be uh, uh, implemented absolutely without exceptions. Wow, that'd be great because I I really respect the fact that it was changed because um, I think it needed to be, but now it seems like it is being manipulated, and that would definitely uh, put something to it, so... Nice. Okay. Yes. And then just, just you one know, more. We, we have to yeah, we have to be sure that it's implemented in the in the whole world, not only one here and one there, because it would not it would not be fair. So we right. decided that starting on July the first, the new rule of another way in at nine thirty in the morning will take effect. Okay. So at nine thirty in the morning. Yes. Nine thirty in the morning, and you have to be what is it? Five or ten percent. Five percent. Five percent allowed. 
you are allowed to have five percent over. Of your bread, okay, okay. And then just one ten percent, ten percent will be the maximum that could be allowed for the fight to take place for the title. Okay, okay. Yes. All right. Interesting. So just one more question. It is a two part question, and then we'll. Uh, let you get on with your busy schedule. Once again, we definitely appreciate you coming on. Um, what would two part question? What is what do you think of as one of or some of your biggest achieve, achievements in your career so far? Well, I would prefer the people of boxing to say that, but I would say that my biggest achievements have been the twelve round rules and the twelve. 24 hours previous way in. My achievement has been my total dedication to the safety of boxing and the protection of the boxers. That's where my mind and my heart has been during all the years of my life as president of the WBC. Everybody, everything else has been secondary to me. And then kind of the second part of the question, what is something that Maybe that is a disappointment that you haven't quite achieved yet or something that you feel like could change in boxing for the better. You talked about how, you know, the sport is going down from, from uh, you yeah. know, from promoters, obviously, you know, commissions, and a lot of people, yeah. everyone really has a part in it. What are your thoughts as far as a disappointment maybe that you haven't been able to get something, uh, you know, across or changed that you think could really yeah. change boxing? Yeah, I have two things in my mind. The first one is the mandatory imposition of a pension plan for retired boxers. And for this, the Dolor Convention approved one dollar for every fan attending any WBC championship bout, starting also on July the 1st. And also seeing people for for uh, donations and at the same time appoint one committee out of the WBC formed of five people to take care of the management, appointment, and distribution of the funds. That's one, that's one thing that is one of my objectives in the uh, few years that I might have uh, <laughs> to live. And the second is to give an opportunity to the smaller promoters to become somebody in the world of boxing. To give an opportunity to the moving up fighters of the world also to be known in the world. How do, today, everything is in the hands of the big televisions who select their own promoters and select their own fighters. Everybody else is out. Nobody wants to promote boxing without television. So the promoters that are very modest are living a very, very bad life. So to remedy that, the WBC is going to start a World WBC Cup to be, uh, to be how to say that, uh, to be held with every champion of every confederation affiliated to WBC. For example, the African champion, the European champion, the British champion, the Asian champion, North American champion, South America. And this is going to be tried to be televised all over the world. And the salaries to the fighters will be very good and untouchable only 10% for the managers. In this way, we are going to give to all the promoters, modest promoters of the world, the opportunity of them being the promoters. The promoters of every single Friday, we are going to work on Fridays. And we hope that with this, we have new heroes, we'll give the opportunities to the very modest promoters to be what they really are, the builders of the boxing, because the top, top promoters take the boxes from all of them. And that's, those are the two main objectives of my continuing being the president of WBC until the time comes that somebody replaced me. 
All right, Jose, we really appreciate you stopping by and, and, and just appreciate you giving us time, and hopefully we speak to you in the future. Yeah, we'll be always at your service, and thank you so much for calling me. You take it easy. Have a great bye night. Bye-bye. Thank night. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.